Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening as you have gathered together, loving Father, to dine, loving Father, and to dive in your word, Lord. We are really grateful because, Lord, you, your word stands higher, Lord, above all, loving Father. And we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit, loving Father, and through your very anointing and through your gift, the treasure of understanding, help us to understand your word. Let the word go deep down. Make our heart a fertile soil, loving Father, to meditate, loving Father, on your word and to, loving Father, use it, loving Father, in the life journey that you have given us so that we can all be victorious, O oh, loving Jesus. We pray, Abba, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, Abba, that, loving Father, we may be able to use the weapon, loving Father, against the evil. And, loving Father, we pray, Lord, that you will give us, loving Father, the wisdom, loving Father, Lord, that the word may penetrate, loving Father, deep inside our spirit, soul, bodies, loving Father, and give life an everlasting life, the life that you came to give abundant life. We pray that out of your word, out of your anointed seed, loving Father, you will give us a thrilling experience and divine encounter through your word, loving Father. We cover ourselves, Master, our gadgets in your holy precious blood and we pray, loving Father, that you will speak through your child, loving Father. I ask in the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, well, good evening, everybody. I believe it will be a nice time as we get through this talk. And I, I, I suggest that when we are going through it, That's my presentation which I'll be putting up. So, uh, you are reading the title as Born a Successful Manager and Steward Leader. There is some deep meaning about that. People normally try to become successful managers without knowing the complete truth. Okay, as a person, I have, I'm basically a South Indian, but born and brought up in Rajasthan. All my studies have taken place over here only. Thereafter, I appeared in the All India Service for Forest Service and got selected in the 1984 batch. And by God's grace, I was allotted my home cadre, Rajasthan. And it was a nice thing that I could come back in Rajasthan to serve from here itself. And by virtue of my career, I joined as an Indian Forest Service officer and the maximum which we can ri rise up in the state is the topmost post of the Principal Chief Conservator of Forest, Head of Forest Force, that is equivalent to the Chief Secretary and the IG Police. So that is how I have been able to complete my journey. But when I joined, I was not conversant with the Bible. Being a Christian from the Christian family, till the age of 40 years, I had never read seriously anything about the Bible. And then some changes take, took place in my life in 1998. And that is the time when I took the Bible and started reading and I completed it in just three months from September 1998 to December 1998. And the beautiful thing I find is Bible should be used by everyone, not as a religious book because it is, in fact, Bible doesn't teach us about any basic type of religions which we see around us, though religion is mentioned in the Bible that also I deal with. But what I found was, these words are like lamp for my feet and a light for my path. So that's why I 
and these are the basic instructions before leaving earth that's how i point point it up and it's really worth seeing when we go through this talk and the presentation now the question arises why the bible only why i took that bible only the first thing i found was bible can be dependent upon as it is not mythology the facts of bible can be easily correlated to natural history of world for example when it speaks about jesus time the king was caesar he uh, is found in natural history the governors and all those names everybody is found apart from the bible also in the natural history books the second thing being a science student i found it confirms science a very simple example i show you bible mentions in genesis 2:7 that god made man out of dust and blew the breath of life and he became a living soul now if you put this body bury it it will get converted into dust form so it is so true scientifically also i mean then the one thing i found was the natural history time zones which are presently used by throughout the world is bc and ad and is based on the person jesus christ and the folk and the very important thing when i read the bible i found was all prophecies in the bible have come to happen or going to come true like the prophecy of christ has been mentioned in isaiah 750 years before his birth everything is mentioned and that happened the whole psalms 22 mentions about the crucifixion the scene of christ so this is how i find the prophecies have come true many many prophecies even about christ even about many other things and that's why i believe even the rest which have to come which i mentioned in revelation will also come to pass so it's a dependable book and it is authenticated by the natural history also right this i will not get into very deep religion as i see in the world is totally different but bible does mention what is a religion in the world the religion is like a set of rules and most of the rules of every religion is good only nobody says the lie respect mother and father and so on and so forth so the scriptures of the other religion also are good only but the true religion as bible defines is do it, any of you think you are religious if you do not control your tongue your religion is worthless and you deceive yourself this is a very important thing which in due course of my talk i also explain as a manager how you have to keep control of your tongue the second thing is also very beautiful what god the father it doesn't mention only god the bible mentions god is the father of spirits and god the father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this to take care of orphans and widows in their suffering and this last part is really touching and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world we are living in a world which is fallen and we can be corrupted very easily so the purpose of a true religion is bible mentions is that you should keep yourself being corrupted by the world now it comes as i want to tell before this that as a man i have been very good with all worldly standards never smoked never drank very good in academics i am a silver medalist of the graduation double promotion during my schooling times and i was second position holder in msc rajasthan university and then when i appeared in the all india service in the final stage when our merits are considered after our training period i stood in the 12th position in the merit in the all india merit so with all these things i was a meritorious guy and yet 
till 1998 i tried to do use my best skills but i was not a very successful man i'll put you up words the reason is mentioned in the bible Jeremiah 10:23 says oh lord i know that the path of life of a man is not in himself it is not within the limited ability of man even one of his best to choose that and direct his steps in life that's what i also feel fought for i was not able to be a successful guy But Mark 10:27 says Jesus glanced around at them and said, "With men it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God." It doesn't say all things are possible for God. Until and unless we are with God, then all things are possible. That's what my journey also will make you know. Now, when you see the last verse, which said. that was man's plan man can think about doing these these, these things but best of his better best efforts is not able to bring everything into order but there is a plan of god which the bible mentions for i know the thoughts and plans that i have for you says the lord thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil i used to question many times about the word he could have finished up with plans for welfare and peace no need to write and not for evil because that's what god's plan is but god even overrules everything that if anything something happens wrong in our life then don't start blaming god because that is not the plan of god it's not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me and i will hear and lead you so these were the promises that i saw in the word then i thought that really it is god which we need to be a successful man and one of the very best example go many people in the bible okay, all the kings david solomon everybody they were all very good successful people but very clearly mentioned about joseph in chapter 93 this is the stage when joseph is being sold as a slave to potiphar the person uh, a person who is working in the kingdom of egypt and this is the verse which is mentioned over but the lord was with joseph that is very essential and he though a slave and as a slave he was totally naked nothing on him nothing no no credit cards no debit cards no bank accounts no audis no nothing 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 was there but yet the bible mentions was a successful and prosperous man with all our worldly standards we cannot say a slave who is totally naked to be a successful and prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian that is potiphar and the best part is the next verse and his master saw that the lord was with him see a person who doesn't know about the bible and the bible and the god of the bible he also encounters that yes that his lord was with them and that the lord made all that he did see nothing few some all that he did to flourish and succeed in his hand i was so impressed with that promise i said lord i also want to be with you this is really a successful man nothing of you yet god was with you you can change and topsy turvy every table in your favor that's how we are and the god of this bible is who wants to this is basic concept if you understand from the bible man is made of three things the body the soul and the spirit of man inside in the body you have the five senses by which you can perceive the physical world not the spiritual world that is the touch feel and all the soul comprises of mind will and emotion that is that peanut brain in your head the will is your will power and emotions are in your heart and then there is a spirit of man and this is in the image of the spirit of god 
when God created man. But due to one reason that is the fall of Adam, this whole thing went topsy turvy. Earlier, the spirit of God was inside the spirit of man, and this was removed due to disobedience that will also come. So this is how we are working. So basically, the Bible mentions man is born spiritually dead. It mentions in Ephesians 2 1 Good News Bible. In the past you were spiritually dead because of your disobedience and sins, and that is the sign. Because you are spiritually dead, that's why you are involved into disobedience and sins. So what was the spiritual death? That is also mentioned in the Bible. And just as all people were made sinner as a result of disobedience of one man, that is the first Adam. So that is how you become a sinner. This is all the corporate world, you know. And God also worked in the corporate manner. The first CEO of us, Adam, fell in disobedience and that made us sinners, not your sins. Yes, thereafter we started sinning. But the primary reason our CEO Adam disobeyed. People don't understand that. People think that I am disobeying and if I set right all the disobedience, I will become right. No, you will never be. In the spiritual realm, your sinner nature that is without God was caused due to disobedience of Adam. That's what Genesis 2, 16, 17 says. Do not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge. The day you will eat it, you will know good and evil and you will surely die. So that is the reason. And in the same way, restoration with God or the restoration of the Spirit of God inside us, which is also known as salvation, moksha, various things, nijad, uddhar in Hindi. That also cannot be done by our works. Our good works cannot be done. For that you need the obedience of what Jesus did. So this is the whole gameplay in the spiritual realm. You become sinner without God and when you become without God, what happens is your spirit which should be united with the spirit of God, there is no union. So you are now walking with your soul and body. You perceive with the five senses, your mind analyzes those things and you do, you can do good things in this situation also. But yet it is not the excellent way. That's why I said the best of your best effort without God may not be the reason of your success. So how now we proceed further? That's when I understood and in 1998, I had already become an IFS officer and I had done a service from 84 to 1998, around more than 14 years of service. Yet I could not meet things properly. I'll just give me a minute. So the Bible mentions, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, not physically transformed, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God, which is the God, kingdom of abundance. When you are in the kingdom of God, then you can be a fruitful vessel for the world. Amen. I'll show you why. Let's just have some patience. Successful managers are born of God. They are not made successful managers. You have to be born of God, then you will become a successful manager. And I can vouch for that. Whoever were born not of blood, that is natural conception, that is your physical birth, nor of the will of flesh, physical impulse, nor the will of man, that of natural father but of God that is a divine and supernatural birth. They are born of God, spiritually transformed, renewed and sanctified. And God saves us by giving us a new birth. Now this is what you should understand. The whole religion gambit is based on your works for salvation. But what the word of God says is that when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared in human form as the man Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ has two identities. He is the son of man and son of God. Son of God is his divinity and son of man is his man identity just like you and me. Now he says he saved us not because of any works of righteousness, not our good works, which always religion is thinking so. That we have done, but because of his own compassion and mercy by the cleansing of the new birth, spiritual transformation, regeneration and renewing of the evolution. Okay? And this is how I came to know from the word of God how we can be born again. Romans 10 9 says, because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is God, recognizing his power, authority and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this happened with me in 1998. A uh, person who was working for the Lord came and shared to me about the gospel that Jesus died for my sin, was buried and risen again. That is what it, this confession is actually of. And that is how I got born again and then my journey started. That was totally different. Earlier to 1998, I was good according to early standards, but yet not successful. I told you. Then I said, then I said go, good academically, I already shared. Double promotion, silver medalist, second position holder, twelfth position holder in UPSC merit. I'm knowledgeable, but yet not prosperous. Because in my life I didn't see that. Laborious, but yet not had achievements. I used to labor a lot. Too much of labor I used to. I remember before my salvation, I used to bring my office work at home and work on my files till. 3 a.m. in the morning, pack up, load it in my morning vehicle that is my ambassador's government vehicle, carry it and then again slog from 10 to 5 in the office. Yet I couldn't achieve very good achievements. I used to believe work is worship which is not, you should only worship God. Amen. In family life and professional life was finding myself cursed. And what is a curse is that you are empowered to fail. And I have failed in many areas of my life till then, 1998, when I got saved. In relational things of issues within the family and also with my wife and children were very fearful about us, the way I used to go on. And that was the first uh, testimony of my elder son was when I got saved and we started walking with Christ. He said, Papa, seeing our lives, your lives, I was thinking of committing a suicide. Can you imagine a young child saying to his father that, how brutal we would have been. So don't think that you can, you, maybe worldly standards, you may be very learned, very thing I was. And though I was not that brutal also, very good. But what I was, I was a good sinner going to hell. A good sinner going to hell till I understood my salvation. After 1998, in September, I got saved with my family, my wife, and the children. Then I saw the blessing of the Lord brings true riches and He adds no sorrow to it. See, the blessing are not the riches, blessing is the Lord, as we saw in Joseph. And Joseph was with God, he was a blessed and prosperous man. <clears throat> and the second part is also important of this verse of the truth, that there is no sorrow. Earlier in my life was having a lot of sorrows. You would imagine, same IFS job, but in the third week, I used to get penniless. With my same salary. And when I was used to keep all my accounts on my computer, even the purchase of six eggs or a bread, that details I used to keep. And on the third week by end, I would become penniless. And then I used to tell my wife, what are you doing? Why are you not saving things? She said a very sweet reply, I only cook, you all eat. <laughs> I was speechless after that. 
And then after I came to know from Habakkuk and all that you bring, you are cursed. And when you are cursed, you carry your wages in a bag with holes. Many things happened when we came to Jaipur. Like my son was having severe asthma. Literally every week, four or five days, we'll be sitting with the doctors, consulting with them. So that was my position before my salvation. But thereafter, we prayed, we got healed of his asthmatic attacks. So that is how our journey started growing in faith. That we knew now God is with us. And who can be against us? And then as Isaiah 48 says, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. So when we can't join in the spirit, with the spirit of God, that is the time we understood. It is not from your textbooks. It is from the spirit of God that you should be taught. Amen. This is my career record. I started as assistant conservator of forest. That was my probation period in 1986 in Baswada. Then I was the first promotion in 1988 in Then North. Then project director DRD. I have varied experience apart from forest service in district rural development authority. Then I was also with the environment department at the rank of Deputy Secretary, Deputy Conservative of Forest, and so on and so forth. So that is my journey. And last, I retired as Principal Chief Conservative of Forest, Head of Forest Board in 2019, June. When I speak about my annual performance report, this is all that is the online available reports, you will see that I have been an excellent officer throughout my career. The scores are 8.5, 8, 8, 10, 10, 10, and these are all, many of them have been rated by the then CMs, Vasundra Raje, Madam Vasundra Raje, Gallo Sir, and all. So my career has been good, and the best thing I found in one of the comments which I received in one of my ACRs by the then Chief Secretary. He says, Mr. Ratnaswamy, Mr. Ratnaswamy is an outstanding officer with all the qualities of head and heart. I really appreciate an unbeliever mentioning about head and heart. And then he says, he makes an excellent team Ready, uh, so educating, encouraging, educating, encouraging, and motivating his subordinate and peers. I think that is one of the very worded qualities for a good manager. And this all happened after my salvation. This is how it has been recorded, even by unbelievers who don't believe the Lord. Now my first exposure after my salvation within the government about my success is seen from one of these progress of revenue receipts. These are all documented things even available on, online today also. I joined in 1999 as conservator of forest departmental operation circle. This is our revenue and shipping uh, department wing which is collecting fuel wood, timber, bamboo and other miscellaneous things. When I joined, earlier to that the achievements was 382 crores. The moment I first year I joined it went doubled literally 608 crores and in next year it went to 1447 crores and then it maintained all like that. So see the hype of revenue in this. The moment you will be as as we see, Joseph was placed and everything where you work, it will succeed. So I am I'm fully, I, I don't follow Christ merely just to have a praise and worship service in the church. I saw practically God working in us in my workplace. 
that is why I am preaching and teaching about this God boldly among people. This is my second position after my salvation. This is Member Secretary Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board. There I was posted in 2000, I believe 2000. And the status of this board was the maximum revenue used to be 1.5, 1.43 crores. And they had to take the grant in aid from the government of Rajasthan to run this show because the total expenditure used to go to the tune of more than 3 crores in the board. After my joining, the first thing I said to the government was, I don't need the grant in aid. And I called my officers and they are not, they don't have the benefit of having a pensionable job. So I told them, I have come to close the board. They were shocked and when they, I stopped the grantee aid from government of Rajasthan, they were shocked because they knew how they will get a salary and all. I said, now either you work or I will close the board and I can assure you, even the state government fails, I will get the salary because I am a man from government of India. I am from all India service. And then I made them work in a beautiful way with the anointing of the grace of God and the revenue started increasing. You see, this is 4.90, 4.49. That means now the board, which had an expenditure of 3, three and odd crores, they could meet that demand from their own incomes. And then the basically the uh, capital increase, so the interest income increased abruptly. And then I started expending expenditure on capital assets. And the whole scenario of the board was changed. Then I have posted as CCF plan, that is Chief Conservative Forest Plan. And here you see the maximum achievement of plantation target was earlier to me was 44,365 hectares in the state. But after my joining, 2009, 10, and 11, it is roughly 1 lakh hectares. And when I was Gone away from there again, it started dropping. So that is how you see God with us can make you work in a very supernatural way because now you can do things with the wisdom of God, which I'll be sharing afterwards in the morning. In the same way, when I was posted as additional principal chief conservator of forest, Forest Conservation Act, the, the so pending realization of amounts in the state was suddenly realized. And we could realize four. I could realize 432 crores. Earlier to that, it was only meager peanuts, like 67 crores and all. And this is one of other postings after SPC is a working plan for settlement. Again, the one which deals with the revenue of the forest. You can see the bar. Earlier to me, the maximum was 46.85 crores. And when I joined this post, it went to double, more than double, 109 crores. You see the top? That is how you will be. Not a, you will be successful and benefited. The organizations where you are working, they will be benefited and all. Because you are now with God working for them. So this is how, and this is when I was in the topmost post, people were not looking after the promotions. It is a record promotion. 196 people promoted when I was as promotion as head of office. So that all shows you the figures how I have been successful after my born again experience, salvation, and when God started working with me and the grace of God I used so mightily things. And I have seen many experiences during that time. Like in the board, it happened once that the union leader of the fourth class union. He brought the first day when I joined, he brought about 15, 16 demands letter. And within a week's time, he, he again entered my room. And I had not done nothing out of that demands. And he was at that time smiling. So I asked him, Why are you smiling? So he said, Sir, outside everybody says to me that today you should enter and do something to the member secretary. And then I came to know. Afterwards, that he has topsy turvy three times the table of earlier member secretaries and maybe slapped two or three member secretaries. 
But then he said, I don't know what happens when I enter the Adu, I can do nothing. <laughs> and I said, that is how Psalms 25 mentions that God will surround you from now and forever. Nobody can touch you. That is the power of God when you want. So that is how we should be. Now let's go. The take of the today from the Bible, the qualities of a leader. He should possess character and inspires confidence. And people like and want to follow. That's the real leader. That's what Psalms 54 says, who despises those who are utterly wicked. That means you should in your workplaces not allow the wicked people to flourish. But who honors the one who fears the Lord, who keeps his word even when it hurts and does not change. Then he says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to succeed, who directs you in the path by which you should go. I have seen God speaking to me in every case, in files and during meeting times and all. He will advise me, he will say these, these things. And then I used to see that it is something supernatural. And the grace of God, that's what the Bible says in Timothy 2.11. The grace has appeared for all men, teaches you. That is how God grace works. The other qualities of a leader are one who leads other to leadership. Not that he becomes a leader and rest should not be made leader. The quality of a leader is when he brings up leadership. Not on popularity but on integrity. I mean, popularity, leadership you can see all throughout in our systems which are working nowadays, especially in the political systems. But it has to be on integrity. And one who guides by influencing by what he does he influences the people that's what these verses say people don't light a lamp and put under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house amen then 516 says let your light shine before people in such a way they will see your good actions and glorify your father in heaven i have seen that I can assure you, when I have worked in my workplace, everybody knew that I am a follower of Christ and they always used to appreciate that whatever you do, you are doing for the good of your people. So that is how a quality of a leader has to be. The, the first chapter in Genesis, when I asked many people why God made man, the common replies are to have fellowship, to praise him, to honor him and all. Fine, that is good, that is true, nothing wrong in that. But the Bible mentions in Genesis 1.28, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subdue. Subdue means using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. That is the purpose of humanity. And have dominion, doing it in authority. These are the qualities of good man. In fact, God created man and made him live on this earth to be a good manager. And I can assure you, be a child, be a housewife or anybody, everybody has to be a manager. Then only he can or she can manage. So that is the quality, fruitful, subdued to me. But when we see, and most of the management case courses teach about this thing, which I like to put forward. Management. If you don't want to have tension, remove the T of management and management. That is what the whole gamut play of management is how to manage men. That is how they finish up. But I go further. I say if you don't want to have no tension, remove the NT of management and manage me. This is much more important than managing men. We, sorry. So for managing me, I understood it has to come from the word of God. And that is what I went into the Bible to find out how it can be done. Because the Bible teaches about man's relationship with God. In Romans 8, 14, he says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And then he says in 8, 9, but you are not living the life of the flesh. The life of the flesh is the 
unsaved person, not born again person, living by his soul and body, that is the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. That means the spiritual man is the one who has the spirit of God inside him and who can direct and control him. Then he says in 8.6, now the mind of the flesh, that is the unsaved person, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. That's what I was explaining. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul, peace, both now and forever. When I came to understand that relationship, then I came to understand that you can hear from God very easily as a child of God. That's in 7 6. But under the obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in newness of life. God wants to prompt from inside. He comes and lives inside you. He wants to prompt you in every area of your life. And 10 27 says, The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them and they follow me. It is not saying that they will learn to listen. It says they are listening. That means the moment you are in union with God in your spirit, you can hear from Him very easily. And the best is the peace that passes understanding when you hear from God. Amen. That's what I made me know how I can walk by the Spirit. The work of the flesh have all these things. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, sorcery, and beings, murders and all. And those who, those who do these such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That means they cannot be a good manager. So till you are walk, walking in the flesh, you will get entangled in these things, some way or the other. So, what we have to do is, we have to receive the fruit of the Spirit. That is the Spirit of God. That is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith. That is the quality of a good manager. And meekness and self-control. That's what back, uh, true religion is, to be safe from the contamination of the world. That is your self-control nature. Against such things there is no law, and there is no law for this. That is expected, and it is due to the Spirit of God. And if you receive and get that Spirit, you will be able to do it. I will also just give a small exposure to sin. Every kind of wrongdoing is sin. We know that those who have been born of God don't go on sinning, rather God protects them, and the evil one can't harm them. Through sin, the evil one, the spiritual realm, kingdom of darkness can harm you. The other he says, we know that we are from God and that the whole world is under the control of evil. This one should understand. See the world. See the advertisements. See the online uh, Google and all these things. What is it? Full of rubbish things. All from the evil one. And we are surrounded with this and we are flooded by these informations. So the way we can be away from that is only when we know God and then we can be protected from the harms of the evil. And I found that in my life. Because in government, I, there was a time before 1998, I was feeling very shaky and I thought I cannot survive in the government. But when I understood from the word that you are born from the incorruptible seed of the word of God and corruption cannot touch you. That is the power of the word of God and the spirit of God. That's how I saw that in the most and most, like most of the organizations where I have worked, they have been very notorious organizations. It's like Hindi mein bolte hai na, jaise koile ki kotri mein jaakar bina kali kala kar nahi aasakte. Getting into a cold uh, place, you cannot come out with black spots. But yet, God protected me. I could be fruitful and become a useful vessel for the institutions. I tell you many things I found in my life, like common things I found like in organizations when government vehicles are being used, they don't fill up the log books and then they will do all those wrong things. But I made it a point when I was member security pollution control board and I used to give my car to anybody who wants to go because it was not my car, it was an office car which could be used by organization. And I used to make it a point the moment I get out and then I come back and sit on my chair. Before that, I would fill up the log book and leave it. What happened that seeing that, literally every vehicle log book was complete in my world. Because no one could say 
that I didn't have time. I said, when I can do that, you have to do it. And they did it. That is how you will bring clarity and corruption can be used. Amen? That's the power of God. When you walk by the word of God and truthfulness, you can do that. Then, so this was about sin. Now, things in the world, this you should understand very clearly. Why people are involved into the world and not that worldly things, I don't believe the material things like AC and cars and all, that's not worldly. Bible defines what is worldly. Here he says, do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What he's saying, why you love the world? Because the love of the Father, that means you have not received the Spirit of God and the love of God inside your heart. That is in Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been poured by the Spirit of God inside our hearts. Till then you will become only worldly. And that's what many of us are facing. Even when we start with good intention, we get entangled into the worldly things. And what are the worldly things? That is mentioned in verse 16. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I saw in my life many of our officers, I could not understand why they were running about for things. They used to think that if I have a phone, I have a vehicle, I have a chamber, I have a AC, then I am an IFS officer. That was very thing wrong. It is the other way. If you are an IFS officer, you will all have all these things very easily. That is the truth. And in fact, I at the level of DC have had all these things, even my dean and PCC have didn't have these things. When I was PDD, I had enjoyed all these things. But that time my PCC have didn't have an AC vehicle or, or AC chamber. That's how God keeps us. So, and the world passes away and the last of it. Now, now the issue comes. How you will know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Like, I became an IFS officer and all. Good, it was good. That is also a will of God for me. But today, I know that I am walking in the will of God because thereafter in 1998, God chose me to become a Bible teacher. And I, right from 2001, when I am in the service, I am being ministering the word of God. And I have, we do it under the banner of God. Bible ministries and I am a word teacher and I teach management, I teach many things from the word of God and at IITs, IIMs and all I have gone and taught because this is such a powerful word and the more better thing is that the, that powerful God is in you who wants to do that and even today I use my title Indian Forest Service as in Father's Service, IFS, in my ministry card I have that all. So how you know that is when you are transformed and renew your this inner mind which is in your soul by the word of God. Then you will be able to walk in the fullness of God. And then you know the good and acceptable and perfect. Today, I continued in my service, retired from my service and still the will of God, I started doing it right from 2001. That is what God called me be a Bible teacher and teach these things. So, I am so satisfied in my life that this is how you should know and find out what is the will of God for you first. And once you have this will, I can assure you, you will become a wonderful and successful people in your life. And I, I, I have experienced this. The moment I started renewing my mind by the word of God, I could do many things which earlier I didn't do. Because the word of God tells you about many things. It, it teaches you about relational issues. It teaches about how you can be a boss, how you can be a subordinate, what we have to do. All these things I learned from the word of God. And really, Bible is the Bible. That's why the phrase is there, na? That something, some important book is used by you, then he says, that is your Bible. So basically, the important thing, you have the Bible, which people are not using. And it is so context has reference and it has not changed at all right for so many years every issue of the world can be dealt by this 
amen so so that is what we did i started renewing my mind and when i am saying renewal of mind i can assure you i did it that i started reading many versions of the bible parallel bibles and all and then i came to understand that really the life giving because the bible says jesus says my word are life and spirit so that is how you should live with so now what slide i am showing you are you having in your life fear anger anxiety confusion jealousy doubt pride unforgiveness greed selfishness lust and vices stress judging gossip deceit and indecency see these are the basic enemies for a manager i had many things like that i was very fearful i used to get angry i used to be very anxious many times confused had jealousy thoughts most of the time i was in doubt and then i had a pride of my own being an all india service officer and all unforgiveness was there amongst my family members etc so i literally have passed all these things then i came to know from the word of god all these things are evil things and they do not come from outside they come from inside of a person and make him unclean this is due to the fallen nature which we have these are the barometers of sin and the cause of unsuccessful managers you can see in your life if you are having all some of these also you will find in these many areas you will fail i'll be taking some you know for the slides then i came up in again a word which very of us most of us is top process i am very busy 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 i stop confessing that word word it is nothing more burden under satan's view god doesn't want you to keep you busy he wants to keep you free bible says in second corinthians 3 16 where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom as i mentioned you earlier i used to slog day and night but after my coming into the lord i could finish my work during my office hours and spend much of my time in reading the word of god and everything and fulfilling all my duties but as earlier to that i used to slog at home bring all the work at home and even could not fulfill the duties of my family all these things were there till 1998 but then there was a sudden change in my life and i became a very fruitful man really fruitful manager in my life as well as in my office place and i could finish up all my work within a much less time than the stipulated time of my working hours i can assure you i never carried any work of office after my salvation at home never ever ever never my whole time now is devoted for the family and for god's kingdom now i am retired but even when i was working i served from 2000 i was doing ministry right from 2001 till 2019 and i devoted all my office hours for the work and less than that and now after that office hours i used to do all the ministry work which i got gave me. Now, when I came to understand, when you are burdened under Satan's yoke, what you should do is come to Jesus. He says, "Come to me," and I came to Jesus. And he says, "All you who labor and are heavy laden." That was my level. I led to when I was not saved and not born again. And I will give you rest. Will give you that. I may. He will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What I mean to say is, really, if you have 
come to Jesus, God of this Bible, He is a true person who wants to make you work in freeness, abundance, and freedom. One of the things is fear which many managers have and then they are literally set, set up. But the Bible says the fear of man brings a snare, that is a trap. When you get fearful, you will be trapped. But whoever loses on trust in and puts his confidence in the Lord is safe and set on high. That's time and again I have experienced in my life day to day. In the government, a call from any place makes fearful, many managers fearful. But I never fear. I was very bold and I was very respectful for my elders and my seniors. I worked under ministers, under me, chief minister and all. Never said anything other than that. So, this is a promise that if we are in the Lord and trust in the Lord, we will be saved. The problem when you start fearing, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has come to me. Whatever you will fear, it will come upon you. Try it. You will see in your life. Whatever you fear, it will come upon you. That's what happened with Job. And that I was afraid of has come to me. This used to happen earlier to me. I was very fearful. I was afraid I, I used to face all these things. I, used, I was afraid of my son's issues. And I used to see, you know, all trapped up, four days in the week, sitting in doctor's play for his uh, asthmatic attacks and all. Very umpteen times I have seen it earlier. Now I can understand. Earlier at that time I didn't knew, otherwise I would have dealt it. But then when I came into the Lord, I came about these things too, across in the word of God. That's the time when I have never feared. Because the moment you start fearing, it will come upon you. That's biblical, spiritual law. Because Fear is not merely a fear that is normally we are having. It is also a spirit. That's why God says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. This is the right spirit. The spirit of fear is from the other one, the kingdom of darkness. The spirit of power, love and sound mind. And I can assure you, if you have this spirit, that is you have power, love and a sound mind, you will be the best decision maker on earth. Best decision maker on earth. You have to do it with power, but under love and a sound mind. But in fear, you lose your, you worry, you do all those things. And then you can't take right decisions and you land up in suits. So, never ever when you are getting fearful, take a decision until this you dealt your spirit. And even if you have to literally get rid of the spirit of fear, then you will be able to do it. The second issue of a good manager is if he gets angry, he is not a good manager. Bible says, remember this my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen. That is again a very good quality of a manager. Slow to speak and should not get angry easily. This change came in my life. Thereafter, any of my subordinate seniors, anybody came in my chamber, they would always say, Sir, I, we never find that you are angry. Even the worst situation they come up with, it, I will find out a solution for them. Keep them comfortable, peaceful, at ease. That's how it makes you to become a very good leader. And many of the officers have returned in my chamber. Sir, when we come into your chamber, we don't know what peace rests upon us. I said it is the peace of Jesus. The peace with Jesus is. It passes all understanding. That is how I understood the peace. It will never make you angry or fearful. An angry person doesn't do what God approves. That is a fact. See persons who are angry, they will do something totally haywire. Why? Because they can't do things which God approves. Further, the Bible speaks about anger. If you become angry, do not let your anger lead you to, into sin and do not stay angry all day. Because that gives the devil a chance to work in your life. 
get rid of your bitterness hot tempers anger these are all types of ang anger which bible is mentioning loud quarreling cursing and hatred be kind to each other sympathetic and why you can be this because forgiving each other as god has forgiven you through christ when you know that god has already forgiven you through christ you will not be able to get angry to do all these things that's what my life changed that's why i understood why salvation is important for a man and to become a good manager and the foremost thing which you should know which religion doesn't preach religion still preaches that god is good when you are good and god is angry when you are wrong but it is not so according to the bible bible says god is not angry with us Isaiah 54 9 says, "Now I promise not to be angry with you again. I will not reprimand or punish you." That is what God has done after the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, because every anger of God has been taken up by Jesus Christ on His body on the cross, punished and dead. That's the good news. That's why God is not angry. That's why the gospel is that God loved the world so much. He's not going to love. He loved the world so much that He gave His begotten Son. Whosoever will believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting. Further, fifty-four ten says, "The mountains and hills may crumble, but my love for you will never end. I will keep you forever. My promise of peace." So says the Lord. So now you are understanding why you need the Bible to understand all these things which are the issues for your good leadership. And only God's love drives out fear. This happened with me when I got understanding that God loves me unmerited way. That cast out all my fears and like the reason was like the punishment which we may come across, the judgment of God has been removed from us. That's why we can understand. that god is now that's what bible says you know god god doesn't have love bible says god is love the person who doesn't love doesn't know god because god is love and he loved us first that is the beauty of this god not that we loved him first he loved us first and is the way god loved us we must also love each other and that is how when we receive the love of god then we be able to and if the love of god is in us then god lives in us and his love is perfected in us amen there is a beautiful example as the, the nature of god's love is mentioned in the bible in first corinthians 13 it says love is patient love is kind love isn't jealous is own praise isn't arrogant actually when you replace the word love by god Then you will understand what is the nature of God. When I read it like this, God is patient, God is kind, God isn't jealous. He doesn't sing his own praises. He doesn't. He is not arrogant. He isn't rude. He doesn't think about himself. He is not irritable. He does not keep track of wrongs. He is happy with injustice is done, but is happy with the truth. God never stops being patient, never stops believing, never stops hoping, never gives up. God never comes to an end. That is, God never fails. That is the promise that this God is, and He is a real God. He is a living God. And when you have this God, then you see how beautifully you can manage your everything. Otherwise, in the world, most of all, us are worried and. Quit worry. Why I will tell you the reasons how it mentions, which I gather from the Bible, is because it is sinful and produces fear. When you are worrying, you will be sinful and produces fear. A disease causing other ills. Most of your problems, diseases, BP, bile, many things, they are coming due to because of worrying, borrowing trouble that cannot be paid back. brooding over what may not happen many times nothing has happened yet you are worrying this will happen that will happen creating trouble misery and death and that causes 
which will be troublesome, misery and death. A burden borrowed from tomorrow. A wonderful definition. A burden borrowed from tomorrow and others who should carry it. You are carrying it. Weight that kills prematurely. Mental and physical suicide. I can assure you, many of those people who are worried ultimately commit suicide. A grave digger that has no sympathy. Needless and waste time and effort that should be spent on worthwhile, worthwhile things. That's why I will buy. Jesus said, don't worry. A robber of faith, peace and trust in a never failing heavenly father. You will never be able to trust the heavenly father if you are worried. And that's why time and again said, do not fear, do not worry. A stumbling block to others, a disgrace to God and should never be indulged in by us. Anxiety over what is nothing today and less tomorrow. Anticipating tra troubles which seldom come to those who trust God. Torment over something that will likely be a blessing if it comes. Li living like an orphan without a heavenly father. A crime against God, man, nature and better. Mental cruelty to self and others. But if you are still worried, it is foolish for whatever is going to happen cannot be stopped by worry. And if it doesn't happen, there is nothing to worry about. Should adversities actually come, one may still be victorious by trusting in God. But to get out of this of our vicious cycle seems to be impossible. The whole world is crumbled under worries. But the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. When I came to the Lord, the first thing I came across was I stopped worrying. Because now I know I have a real big boss, my father, Abba, God the Father. And I know he takes care of me. That's why I feel not worry. That's what he says. Cast all your Cares, anxieties. That is how we become humble before God. The viewpoint about worrying is mentioned. I tell you to stop worrying. That's what Jesus says about what you will eat, drink. Or, that these are the common reasons for worries. Kya khayenge, kya peenge, kya peenge. That is day to day life. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? And the best example he says in the Bible is look at the words, birds, they don't plant, harvest or gather the harvest and the plants. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you more, more worthy than they? Really, if you don't know God as your father, you will be worried. Amen. Matthew 6, 27 says, can any of you add a single hour to your life by worry? No. So then by to worry? You may. Decrease your hours of your life with worry. Do not worry about anything he says. That's wonderful. Why? But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking Him with a thankful heart. That means when you ask itself, you should thank because you know that He is the Father who can provide. That's why you can thank Him when you pray itself. Not that after you receive that you become thankful. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ. That's the only way you will never worry. God's peace. The eternal peace which God has. Peace is what I, that's what Jesus said. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I need. See, in the world also there is peace. Go and see a good cartoon movie. You will be very happy. Come out of it again. You will be but many people say, I go to that place, go to Kashmir, find it very peaceful, and then come back to Rajasthan, back in square. But here he says, peace is what I give with you, it is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the whole world does. That means there is a world way of giving peace, which is not God's way of giving peace. And the best part is, then you will not be worried and upset, and not be afraid. The day I receive Christ and His peace, this is what I have experienced in my life. I do not get worried. I am very, I do not get upset, neither I get afraid. I mean, I can tell you, even giving this talk, you could have got 
worried and afraid, but never I. Because I know God can do it because He is the one who has anointed me, appointed me to do these things. The very other thing which is a killer for good marriages is your pride. Because only, see the word, only by pride come and contention and quarrel. If you are keep on grumbling, quarreling, it is your pride, not other people. But with the well advised is well so. Pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. So you will be seeing it. Many of our politicians who are becoming like that, you will see the results in the coming elections. This is a problem. Whenever you will be prideful, you will lead to destruction and arrogance to downfall. I have come across many officers and all. The moment they get prideful, they perish. Why? These are the symptoms of pride. It hides. It will never show that he is prideful. Always advice for everyone. Not take advice. Always think they are right. They always blame other people. Impatience is fruit of pride. Incompatible with people. Judgmental on every small issues. But they love attention for themselves. Not do much to other people. Pride keeps us angry. Do not forgive. Mental reasoning that is figure it out and get deceived. That is the problem with pride. It's a very silent killer and you will not know. And that was the first sin which happened in, with Satan. That is when he was lucid. The moment he became prideful, all these things happened in him. Amen? Now, this is how we can be a good manager. You should have a humble living. Romans 12, 8. If it is encouraging others, devote yourself to giving encouragement. How much as a leader you are encouraging people? If it is sharing, be generous. If it is leadership, lead enthusiastically. Not by whips and wound in a very harsh way, but enthusiastically. If it is helping people in need, help them cheerfully, not with regret, remorse. 29 says, love sincerely and hate evil. Hold on what is good. That is what we have to do. Be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect. Amen? If you are not respecting your people, subordinates and elders, you are not a good leader. Be happy in your confidence. Be patient in trouble. That is good good quality of a manager. When troubles come around, don't get shaky, but be, be patient and pray continually. Share what you have with God's people who are in need. Be hospitable. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and don't curse them. That's great command, but it is very fruitful if you do that. Be happy with those who are happy. Be sad with those who are sad. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be arrogant. And be friendly to humble people. This is the qualities of this stewardship. Friendly to humble people. Don't think that you are smarter than you really are. Don't pe pay people back with evil. That is what the world is doing. Evil for evil. For the evil they do to you. Focus your thoughts on those things that are considered as much as it is possible. It doesn't say that you have to only. As much as it is possible, live in peace with everyone. That will make you a very good leader. Don't take revenge, dear friends. Instead, let God's anger take care of it. After all, scripture says, I alone have the right to take revenge. I will pay back, says the Lord. But I was astonished to see the next verse. 20 says, therefore, this is a joint to the first verse. He says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. If you do this, 
you will make him feel guilty and ashamed. You shall heap coals of fire on his head. So God is not re revenging by him, sir. He is revenging through you only when you walk in the love of God. Then it becomes the coals of fire on his head. Don't let evil conquer you. That is a very common thing which we face. Whenever we have been disturbed, evil things come upon us. But we have to conquer. We start also doing the evil things to others. That not is no way to, to conquer is to conquer evil with good. So these are all these beautiful qualities for a humble manager and a steward. Greed. That is one more problem among us, the managers who get greedy. What did we bring into the world? Nothing. What can we take out of the world? Nothing. So then, if we have food and clothes, that should be enough for us. That is for our requirement. Don't hold many things which are not required. Let it be used. That's what the good manager that is the uh, subdue word was used for. To use the resources for the good of God and others. That is how you have to be. Not for yourself. I will now teach you something very important. But those who want to get rich fall into temptations and are caught in the trap of many foolish and harmful desires, which pull them down to ruin and destruction. Many, many I have seen develop the greed for money. See, money is not harmful, but the love of money is the root cause of all kinds of evil. That is what I mentioned in verse 6 10. The love of money is a source of all kinds of evil. Not one or two, all kinds of evil. So if you are having evil things in your life, one reason could be the love of money. Some have been so eager to have it that they have wandered away from the faith and have broken their hearts with many sorrows. So you can land up into sorrow in your love of money. But you, man of God, avoid all these things. Strive for righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and that is the qualities which we should imbibe. But if your heart, now this is speaking about the wisdom. Wisdom is also two. There is a worldly wisdom and there is a godly wisdom. What is worldly wisdom? In Bible, James chapter says, if your heart, you are jealous, bitter and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. It belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. And that is what you see all the through the month, day to day newspapers and all. The world is actually walking in the worldly wisdom, which is basically unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every evil kind of evil. Every kind of evil. So that is the worldly wisdom which it gives. But godly wisdom, it says, the same chapter. But the wisdom from above is pure, first of all. It is also peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion, produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. I have seen in my life, after seeing the godly wisdom of Christ, that my whole working change, it becomes more peaceful, gentle, friendly, full of compassion, and produces a harvest of good deeds. And as you have seen even the records which I have about the government, that really clearly reflects that you will bear much fruit. And it's so simple to receive this godly wisdom. If any of you need wisdom to know what you should do, you should ask God. And He will give it to you. God is generous to everyone and doesn't find fault with them. Even if we are wrong in some areas, yet when we ask God in sincere faith, he is ready to give you wisdom to come out of all those problems also. When you ask for something, that's the principle that we should not doubt, otherwise we will not receive it. The very important Bible speaks about is knowledge. See, without right knowledge, you will not have right faith and right work. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. And I can assure you, if you really want to have right knowledge, do as I have been doing it. Get into the word of God and you have every knowledge for every issue in some or the other way to correct you and guide you and lead you. So always depend on the word of God. Do get into the word and find out that knowledge. 
Now these are about the relationships which as a manager we should have for slaves or subordinates. Obey your earthly masters with proper respect. Be as sincere as you are when you obey God. As you obey God, in the same way you should obey your masters. Then he says, don't obey them only while you are being watched, but if you merely wanted to please me. See, don't be men pleasers by showing that I am working, but otherwise you are not working and doing the right things. But obey like slaves who belong to God, who have a deep desire to do what God wants them to do. Not what merely boss, what God wants them to do. Serve eagerly as you are serving your heavenly master and not merely serving human masters. That was the nature I developed. I was not sitting in my office if my boss is there or somebody. I was there because I had seen by God and that is how I used to keep my working. Everywhere I used to see, yes, God is seeing me, so I have to <coughs> please Him in every way. You know that your heavenly master will reward all of us for whatever good we and I have received abundance of everything in my life. As a boss, masters treat, treat your slaves, the subordinates with respect. Don't threaten a slave. That's what we keep on doing. Be just and fair to your slaves. You know that there is one master in heaven who has authority over both of you and he doesn't play games. This is one more important work of a man. Be laborious, work hard. The desire of a lazy person will kill him because his hands will be strong. Lazy people should learn a lesson from the way and sleep. How laborious will you Being lazy will make you poor, but hard work will make you rich. No matter how much a lazy person may want something, he will never get it. A hard worker will get everything he wants. So that is the principle. And the best way to get laborious is to receive the grace of God, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. But by the grace, the unmerited favor and blessing of God, I am what I am. And His grace toward me was not found to be for nothing fruitless and without effect. In fact, I work harder than all of them. That is what I found in my life. It's because by the grace I am working harder, I can do many things in a very reduced time, which I was not having earlier. The grace of God was not with me earlier. The day I received that grace, I could do things very easily. Though it was not really I, but the grace, the unmerited favor of God which was with me. I am fully agreeing with this word and I have seen it in my life. The day I received the grace of God and His salvation and the spirit of grace, I could do things which, which I was not able to do it because of the empowerment of God through this grace. This is one more thing which you should always remember as a manager. And God said, Behold, the people is one, they all have one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing which they have imagined to do will be restrained from them. Though this is being used in the Bible for a negative thing when God came and then they were constructing the Tower of Babel and brought confusion. But what the principle is saying is, now nothing which they have imagined to do. So start imagining great things, big things. I am still imagining many, many things which I am going to do. Why? Because the Bible says, now nothing which they have imagined to do will be restrained from them. I, I remember when it was coming about revenue, when I called my subordinate officer and I asked them what will be the revenue. He said, sir, last year it was something like 45 crore, maybe 50 crore. I said, forget it. It will be double, more than 100 crore. And I imagined that. And I found it and it went up to 109. That is what I am saying. Start imagining it. Because you are working with a great God who can do everything. Because this is what is the principle. This is the spiritual principle behind it. Which is in Proverbs. But as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So whatever you are thinking, you, will, you can limit yourself. So think high. Think that is what all these management courses are telling you know, positive thinking and you know, all that's all from the Bible. So is he. 
So what whatever comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. What you are thinking in your heart, mind it, guide it, and it should be thinking according to what the word of God says, not according to the world, or not what you think, but what the word says. That I am successful in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through the strength of Jesus. All these things you should, that is the spring. That is how your heart should be filled with the word of God. And that is why he says a glad, glad heart makes a cheerful confidence. That's what I was sharing. That all the officers, whenever you used to all, my subordinate officers used to they would always say, Sir, you are so happy. You are always having a cheerful confidence. Why? Because I believe and understood the truths of the word of God. But by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. A happy heart is good medicine. Cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. All the things that we mentioned in the word of God for a good quality manager to live. This is one more spiritual thing which hampers many things in our life. What are you speaking or saying? It can lead to death or life. Choice is with us. It's not with God, it's with us. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the time. What you are confessing? That project will fail. No. Never do that. Because it says, death and life are in the power of the time. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. Even many of my officers, someone else used to come and they will get fearful and start saying something like, nothing can happen. I said, no. We will be able to do it. Because I know the principle. I speak to life. Because every word has power to create. Proverbs 21 23 says, Whoever guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. So beautiful. If you can, that's what he says now. If you will guard, the true religion is guarding what you say. That is where it comes from. Whenever Whoever guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Never ever say, confess negativity and loss or anything. What you decide and say decrees established and is done in your life. As I said, I decree that the revenue will increase with no logical background for them. Yet, when I decree, decide and decree a thing, and it will be established for you. Amen. Thank you. Are you convinced? Try it. It will work in your life. You, I want you should all learn these principles. <coughs> I like this thing. Revelation was in, had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. So what is that? For the word of a king is authority and power. And who can say to him, what are you doing? I have seen umpteen times. Even my bosses, whatever I said, they used to agree with me. Even they had given me a free thing that I could do many decisions, and they would say, You do it, we'll agree with you. Umpteen times, ministers and all have told me, Charles, you can take a decision, we are assured that it will be right, and we'll agree with you. That is how he has established it. And you can they are all proof for you. The files are still lying in the government. Where you see, most of my decisions have been post facto sanctioned by my chairmen or uh, senior officers. Why? Because they had a confidence. They used to just give me a phone call and say, okay, decide for yourself on this issue and let me know. I will, uh, I will agree with what you have done. That is the confidence they have. In this. That is where you... Then they, you understand that they can see that there is someone inside who is doing it. Amen. One more advice. Murmuring will destroy you. Nor murmur complaining as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the I never know. There will be always a short, shortage of staff in your concerns, and, but I never murmur. I dealt it. Start dealing it, but don't murmur that I cannot do it. You can because God is with you and make you do many, many things which is impossible for you. So that is where I stop murmuring about issues in my organizations. 
and that is a perfect man, a perfect leader, a perfect manager. For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things, he is full developed character and a perfect man. So what you are saying is very important. That reflects that how well developed character you have, and how perfect a man you are. And you say you should be able to do it. Whatever I said, I committed, I did it. Why? Because I am a perfect man. Able to control his whole body and curb his entire nature. That is the quality of a good manager and student. Temptations, nothing much to say. It is not that God tempts us, it is we who get into temptation by our own desires. So, and trap, that's why we have not to fall in lust. And actually, when we have caught temptations and trials, we should do it, count it also. We become depressed, worried, and all. No, be joyful. Half of the battle is won by when you are joyful, when you rejoice. And when you endure it, you come out and then you will be lacking nothing of that. Once you come into a test and trial, and if you are joyful and you and, and, and you do it patiently, you will come out of it perfect and complete, lacking nothing in it. Why? Because we have supernatural protection. That was the verse which God gave me when the, uh, the fourth class union leaders told me. Said, I read that verse coming home. Those who trust and lean on and confidently hope in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides and stands for us forever. As the mountains are round about that, Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from this time forth and for not for some time, forever. I know that my God is around me. He is just like a shield around me. Because I trust him. I believe that he is my Lord and my Savior. One more basic principle, I will try to wind up quickly so that even if you have some questions and all, we can discuss it up. If a person gets trapped by wrong names, those of you who are spiritual seniors should help that person turn away from wrong name, doing wrong. Do it in a gentle way. At the same time, watch yourself so that you also are not trapped. A wonderful advice from the Bible. But yet we can bring out people who are fallen due to some of the other reasons. Help carry each other's burdens. You are something when you really are nothing, you are only deceiving yourself. Each of you must examine your own actions. Then you can be proud of your own accomplishments without comparing yourselves to others. Don't compare with others. Compare yourself with your actions. Assume you are on responsibility. These are all biblical verses from Galatians. They are very right principles for having a good stewardship and a manager. This is a basically part which is in the world. Whatever you plant is what you will harvest. That is a worldly proverb. It is from the Bible only, but it is incomplete till we get into 6 8. If you plant in the soil of your corrupt nation, that is your unsaved nature, you will harvest a six yeah. Many times you must have seen that you are doing good yet many things bad are happening. Because you have not yet sown it in the spiritual nature. When you are sowing in the spirit, then you have good and fruitful life. My life changed when I started my journey of sowing after my salvation. So this is wonderful things which will happen. This is one very good advice. Ourselves to get tired of living the right way. We should always live a right way. Certainly each of us will receive everlasting good and fruitful life at the proper time if we don't give up. Never give up in your life. There are will situations and all. Ups and downs can be there. But yet we should never give up. Whenever we have the opportunity, we have to do what is good for everyone. Especially for the family where we are. So these are some more. Because basically as an organization, we are working like a body, a family, if it only had one part, it's a question. So there are many parts, but one body. And I can't say to a hand, 
I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. The opposite is true. The parts of the body that we think are weaker are the ones we really need. Think about it. If a morning office you come and if that sweeper has not cleaned that office, will you be able to sit over there? So don't think that he is a small thing. He is equally important for that office. Always respect everyone who play. Never ever differentiate that you are a big boss and he is something very low. Everyone's work makes a family and everyone's makes an organization. You work in the best way. Never neglect your parts in your organization or people in your organization. The body should not be divided, but rather that all of its parts should feel and say the same concern for each other. That is how an organization or institution is built. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts share the suffering. If one part is praised, all the others share in its happiness. Never individual appointments. It has to be, the whole body should be. So I will now like to conclude as in the initial chapters of Genesis, the Lord God took the man and they put him in the garden of Eden to tend and guard and keep it. These are three things which he told him to do. To tend is to develop an organization. To guard is to protect that organization or the workplace. And to keep it is to conserve that organization. That is one a true, true leader is. A true man, true leadership is with the stewardship to develop, protect, and conserve. So, our purpose, we as managers in our institution, will be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have dominion. So, friends, bless you all with a powerful career as a successful manager. Thank you, my esteemed participants. I will now close this talk. And I will do it with a very small prayer and I assure you whatever I have spoken and all these things I keep it as a record and try to put it on my video channel and you, it will be YouTube channel it will be available within a day or two you can watch it and you can share it and you can re-go re through it and find out many things if you have missed anything so I will close it with a word of prayer Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful ministering of the word as a born successful manager and a student. Lord, thank you that you have done it and you will fulfill it. And I pray, Heavenly Father, every person who has sat under my word and heard about these wonderful truths from the word of God, the double-edged sword, my pierced spirit, soul and body, and make them a fruitful and really great managers of, and stewards in their organizations that they may, when they work, they may, the people around them may know that Christ is within them. Lord, I thank you and I bless them with fruitfulness, multiply, subdue and have dominion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and Amen.